Now, if you're interested in getting into laser engraving, but would like to have a laser that's gonna cover a wide variety of materials, ranging from anywhere from wood all the way up to metal, then you'll wanna check out this video because today we're taking a look at the Atom Stack Craft. And this is a laser that has a dual laser module where the laser head itself has a 20 watt diode laser, which is gonna handle wood type materials as well as several others, including slate. And then it also has an IR module, which uh, also then means that it's gonna be able to cover metal. So you get the best of both worlds when it comes to laser engraving in one solution. And what makes this so spectacular is there's, there's no swapping out of the laser head, which is something really typical that you see when you would like to have two type of lasers in one solution. So in today's video, we're gonna look at all the features, we're gonna cover also our experience laser engraving and why you may wanna consider this as something that you'd add to either your small business uh, or if you're looking to start a small business laser engraving, you'll wanna consider this laser. So let's go ahead and check it out. Now the Atom Stack Craft is a dual laser uh, laser cutter engraver. It basically has a 20 watt diode laser, which is also known as the blue laser. And then it also has a one watt or a one two watt IR laser, which is also known as a red laser. Now the combination of both of these lasers is gonna give you the ability to engrave on a wide variety of material from woods to metals and anything in between. It really opens up both worlds when it comes to laser engraving. And the actual lasers themselves are gonna give you different resolutions, and this is just the nature of the lasers, right? So when you start looking at the single IR laser, which by the way, it's all embedded, you don't have to remove anything or put something back in, all you do is simply push a button, and by pushing that single button or actuating it through the software, you're able to get a 0 .03 by 0 .03 single IR laser, and that is gonna give you a very finite resolution. Now, if you're looking at the, uh, blue laser, right? The blue laser mode, you're going to have a 0 0.08 uh, by 0 0.012 single laser mode. Now, the cool thing about this laser is that you can use them to have, let's say, one use at a time. In other words, have only blue or only red. Or what you could do is you can also combine them. The reality is, is that even using a blue laser, for example, on metals gives you a different effect. So being able to combine them both together is really cool. It also comes with what I've seen is, in my opinion, probably the first of its kind, fire extinguishing air pump solution. So the air pump is used to make sure that you don't get any flames while you're laser engraving. It re reduces charring, but they've also incorporated into it a um, water pump or fire extinguisher. So as long as it has some water in it, if it detects any fire, it is going to automatically extinguish the items. That is pretty cool. Now, this is a XY uh, solution, right? Which means that it's going to give it the ability to move a little bit faster than traditional lasers. We're talking about 600 millimeters per second. Now keep in mind that while you have that theoretical number of 600 millimeters per second, the faster you go, the less the quality is going to be because the laser is moving so fast and forth and back and forth. So just keep that in mind. Typically, I don't really run my lasers at the top speed. It's somewhere in between, but it's good to know that this laser can go really fast. Now the working area, right, is 19.6 uh, by 12.6. That's gonna give you a really, really nice working area when it comes to materials that you wanna engrave and cut. And it also has a uh, extendable conveyor type system that's gonna make this even larger. We're talking 19.6 by 31.5 inches. That makes it really big. Now it does have a built-in five megapixel um, high definition camera, which means you're gonna be able to see what you're doing and you're gonna be able to place items based on sight. And that's what I've been doing. Now, anytime you do something like this, it's just a habit of mine and many laser crafters do this, is you do a combination of both sight, um, you know, on the camera alignment, but then you also do a framing just to make sure and double check everything is good. And you could do both with this as well. And they're claiming precision on the camera of up to 0 0.5 millimeters, which is really, really good positioning. Now, they also have batch engraving, and batch engraving is something that's become really popular where you could actually have multiple, let's say, dog tags or multiple pieces of wood, and you wanna engrave them all at the same time, you could push a button and it kind of replicates it across all of them. So you have a, that capability as well. Now, from a cutting perspective, this has some cutting power, and I always get asked about cutting. I don't really do a lot of cutting, but let me just cover it. Uh, I'm more am an engraver, right? Uh, so from a cutting perspective, it can cut 10 millimeter wood. That's pretty thick. Five millimeter black acrylic in one pass. So both of those, 10 millimeter wood, 
And if you think about the acrylic, it's gonna cut it in one pass. And sometimes I would say I will use that power if I'm gonna be cutting. Um, in many cases, I probably uh, rather go faster and less power so that I can do multiple passes and make sure I have a clean cut. So you'll need to experiment to see what is gonna be the best for you. Now you can work with a variety of material, wood, paper, MDF. Uh, you can also then work with felt cloth, uh, denim, right? You can do also dark opaque acrylic, not clear. You can work with that when it comes to cutting. Now from an engraving perspective, what you can also then work on is a variety of materials as well. You're talking about wood, leather, uh, think about denim, ceramics, MDF, aluminum. You could do dark opaque acrylics as well. You could do metal, you could do uh, brushed stainless steel, stone, PCBs, bamboo, um, so many different materials. And that's because of, again, the flexibility that you have with these lasers. Now, when you start getting into the infrared laser, this is where it opens up even more material. Basically, now you're really focusing on metals, right? And when you think about metals, gold, silver, brass, iron, you got it. Aluminum, you got it. And then you're gonna be able to, again, um, mark uh, a lot of different types of materials, which makes this a really capable laser. Now keep in mind, this is a very small IR laser. And in my experience using the laser, while it's capable and I got some great uh, markings, it also is not the fastest laser because of the power rating for the ac actual smaller laser. So combined laser gives you uh, great capabilities, which opens up materials in a great way, but the power rating is low, so just remember that, that it's gonna take some time. It's not gonna be as fast as a fiber or faster than some of the other lasers that have maybe a 20 watt IR. But this is a great solution where it combines both and it keeps it at a very uh, I would say affordable price when it comes to the combination of both laser types. Now my Atom Stack Craft is gonna look a little different than some of the ones that you've seen in other reviews uh, because of the fact that I chose not to remove this inner plastic here sheet. I just like the way it looks. I'm gonna, I don't know how long it's gonna last where I'm gonna be able to do this, but I love the way that I had kind of like the clear view on the top and then the frosted view in the front. Now, we're gonna take a look at all the different aspects of the laser, but one of the things I just wanted to highlight is when you're using this laser, this uh, door is no joke, heavy duty door. But the thing about it is that this cover, when you lower it, I'm gonna just show you something. If I were to stop right there, it's gonna come down. And because it's heavy, it's gonna come down with force. I wish it had some type of shock, um, some type of um, almost like shock absorber, where as you're lowering it down, the actual, it wouldn't be as, as hard, that force. Now watch, if I let it go right here, it's gonna come down hard. It's gonna come down hard. And it's not until, watch this, until it's right there, almost in the full open position, where it actually locks into place. So that's one thing that I wish um, Adam Stack would do something about. The one thing I uh, wanna highlight that I, I think that this is probably one of the best well-lit lasers that I've had in a very long time. Uh, very generous lighting on every single side. And then the bed itself is really, really nice. Now we've been using our magnetic adapters as we've been doing our tests, which I'm gonna show you some of the outputs that I've had. Uh, but you'll notice also here that you do have a 1.2 watt um, IR and then a 20 watt uh, diode laser. So this is gonna give you the flexibility as you saw to basically do metals as well as uh, traditional slates, wood coasters, the things that we normally do on the channel. So that's really nice. Let's go ahead and close this. Uh, the one thing that you also notice here is that there is a camera and the camera will shoot everything on the bed. Uh, they primarily say to try to keep the focus in the, in the center as you're setting up the software. And the software is very similar to what you found in many of the applications. A lot easier than I would say than Lightburn, but also it's probably not as robust as Lightburn is. So if you're new to laser engraving, I think you can do fine with the actual uh, software itself. Now let's take a look at some of the buttons that you see here in the bottom. Now first we're gonna take a look at is uh, this area here, the control panel. If you press this button here, you're basically choosing your different laser types. Uh, the red means that you're in the IR laser or metal. Uh, the violet means that you're using both. And then blue is you're using the blue one. You do have a focus button, right? And then what you also then have is your alarm button. Now keep in mind that this has a, an automatic, um, I would say fire detection system that is also gonna extinguish the flames using water. Uh, but the controls that you see here are pretty straightforward. Here on the side right off camera is the actual power button that you've flipped to turn on the unit. Now the desktop software has gone through several upgrades since we've been testing the product. And I think that it is, it's a good software package and the experience is also pretty straightforward. 
A couple things that you'll notice is that you can obviously see everything that's taking place on the bed rather easily here. Uh, you'll notice that I have this frame around here, which is kind of like the sweet spot for the actual engraving. And there's a lot of common tools that you're going to find. So for example, ability to select, hand, images, working with text. You know, uh, over here you can insert shapes if you'd like to work with. There's also, you know, this area where there's a lot of uh, predefined 3D engraving, there's shapes, there's animals, you know, festival. There's just a lot of content that they've provided for you to, you know, really explore your creativity. Uh, you have ruler, right? So you can see, again, um, and measure items on the screen. So let me just show you what I'm doing right here. So if I want to know what, how big this is. I can go ahead and see that. So that's a nice little tool. I don't think I've seen any other uh, laser engraver you know, package that includes um, a ruler like that. So I think that that's pretty cool. Uh, you obviously have the camera. And let me just go ahead and do a quick refresh. And you're going to see um, in our primary camera what happens when I do this. I'm going to hit uh, camera refresh. And what will happen is the actual laser head is going to move um, out of the way. And we'll do this every single time no matter where the laser is at. And then it will basically take a a picture and give you an update of what's going on on the screen, which you can see right here. So if I hide the background and I do that again, watch what will happen. All right? It's doing that position move again and it's coming back. And once it does it, you're going to see the image is going to, it's going to be basically update itself. And let's go ahead and do the show background so we can get that. Now, uh, we do have something here that we're going to engrave, right? And there is also a very decent size material library. So let's just go into this so you can see this for a second. So you'll notice there's a lot of common things here. There's two color uh, plastic. You notice that there's also glass, which is something that I really appreciate because that's something that's uh, difficult. You also can work with coaster. So you have your rock three millimeter here. You have basswood, beech, right? Pine. Um, notice this, you also have the galvanized um, material, right? So I like that, um, that they have also some of the, some of the uh, metals here that makes it easier for you to start going. Also denim, right? And we'll continue to scroll down. Bamboo, which is what we're going to do. And then you have all these other ones, even on black acrylic. And you'll see some of the samples in a couple seconds that we did with the acrylic. So I'm going to go ahead and choose bamboo because that's going to be the type that I'm going to be working with. And you'll notice that the settings that it shows in is obviously the blue light. You have 80, you have 1500 is the speed or 15,000. And then you have the lines for uh, line spacing, right, right there. Uh, if air assist is on or off, you can go ahead and turn that on or off. We'll go ahead and turn it on so we can see that. It doesn't, it says it doesn't need it. So but that's something that you can turn it on or off because it's not part of the, the parameters that it provides. You have over scanning, constant power, and then, you know, engraving those, right, bi-directional and horizontal. Let's just see how this is going to work. Oh, and by the way, you'll notice that the laser type that we're using is blue light. You can switch it to dual light if that's something you wanted to. In this case, since we're working with bamboo, it's not required. I'm going to go ahead and start, and it's going to go ahead and start engraving. All right, so let's go ahead and pull back for a second. We'll go ahead and open this up and pull the actual piece of wood out so you can see. Uh, the overall quality is actually really good. It's really, really fine. We'll go ahead and put this on camera and zoom that out for you guys. Uh, this is what I'm talking about. That's for bamboo. This is this is actually very hard. Uh, bamboo tends to not be dark. Bamboo, as you're engraving it, tends to be on the light side. Notice right here, this is actually uh, burned, right? But I did a couple tests, this one and this one, and it's pretty consistent. And what I like is that you're getting a really nice dark. Uh, engrave and the other thing to highlight is that you're not getting any soot right you're not getting it you know this is something that I can easily wipe off doesn't take a lot to take that out and air assist wasn't on either so this to me is pretty impressive getting this overall quality because you you can see right there that, that is pretty nice and crisp as it was coming across now that engrave took around six minutes maybe seven minutes to do and that's, I would say, is what I find, especially with gantries. If you're using, let's say, a CO2 Galvo, it's going to be much faster. If you're using, um, pretty much that's going to beat anything because of the fact that the head has to move forward and back. Now, one of the things I wanted to see is how well would it do with metals? So we actually ran some metal and we're using the actual IR laser. And you can see right here the effect that we got. Uh, this, is, this is, again, it's, it's impressive because 
I didn't have to switch lasers. So if you are looking to get a one laser, one machine that's going to be able to work on a variety of materials and invest the money once, this, this is definitely fits the bill. Now, the one thing I will highlight is that it's not fast. Again, because the head, the gantry has to move left to right uh, and from bottom up in order to get that engraved. But you can see this uh, turned out really nice. I'm actually really happy with this. This is, you know, getting a dark mark like this is really difficult. The other thing I'll highlight is that this mark that you see right here is not an engrave. It's actually a mark. Um, my nail is not going into it, which I actually like because that means that this will not rust. So take a look at it this really closely. Look at, look, notice how nice and black that is. Really, really nice. And then I ran some another one, and I just wanted to see if there would be any difference. And this one I think was a combined. I did a combined laser, both blue and black. And I'd say if we put them side by side, you can see it right there. Depending on the angle, you know, it may vary from laser to laser. But as you can see right there, kind of like this one the best. So we did that in acrylic. And you notice how nice that popped. Uh, for those of you who are interested in the settings, those are the settings I used. Power. 80, speed 2000, and then you can see the lines per centimeter and the number of passes. So this worked out really, really well as well. Now, in order to get the best engraving experience, one of the things that we've implemented is using our jig system. So what you're seeing here is a metal card being engraved with an IR laser. And I have a card jig that basically allows me to have all my cards, business cards that I'm going to be engraving. It's magnetic, so it actually attaches to the bottom of the base. Um, even though I can use the honeycomb, I chose to go directly with the base out, uh, underneath the honeycomb. So I removed it and I ran it. Now the IR laser, as you can see, is really going through and it is engraving uh, the card, removing the actual anodized um, material, that the, the paint that's on top of these um, uh, metal cards. So uh, we'll go ahead and fast forward this video so that we can get a little bit to the end. But you can see uh, what the process is like. This is about a five minute process to do a card. And this is when I was mentioning about how long it would take to engrave items because of it being a gantry. This is what you can expect when doing this. The cool thing about this, though, is since you have a jig like this in place, you can just let it run um, and it will move from the card to card and get six cards done and you won't have to worry about replacing them. So really cool um, adaptation uh, of using a jig in order to be able to get the kind of engraving that we want. All right, so now the cards is complete and let's bring it on camera so you can see what it looks like and it looks spectacular. Uh, that's what I would expect. And again, this is something that you typically don't see of this type of laser. Now, the next thing we're going to do is do some corks. Same thing here. I'm using my jig system to do this and I am going to be engraving on a cork. And to keep things consistent, I'm using the same quote about sarcasm so that you can see the versatility going from metal, now going to a wood um, bottle stopper or wine stopper. Now, if you have, for example, a bar in your home and you'd like to have this or you're selling this, these are very popular. The cork stoppers or the bottle stoppers are very popular. This whole process took a little bit over a minute to engrave. So what we'll do is we'll jump to the end so you can see what the end product looks like. All right, so now that it's done, let's go ahead and reach in and grab the cork. And again, we could have done all of these. Look how nice that came out. Again, went from metal to now wood. This is what we're talking about. Now, the next thing we're going to do is uh, use the same jig system, but now we're looking at a coaster jig and running um, a coaster on the same laser. You'll notice that just to, to bring some variety in here, I now have the honeycomb in place um, and I'm still able to use my magnetic uh, jig system to basically support this jig. And this is going to, again, engrave um, not one slate, but up to four slates at a time, if that's something that I'd like to do. Now, engraving this coaster took around six minutes to do, and it's complete. So we'll go ahead and open up the cover, and we will take a look at this, again, coaster. And again, great detail, great quality. And what I love, again, is that you could do many coasters at the same time, four or more, obviously, because this bed is pretty large. So guys, that wraps up our review. See you in the next video.